What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, An old story about how a woman tried to get the money back for a pup we sold her without actually returning him. This happened a good while ago, but I was discussing it with my mom recently, so it's still fresh and the one part of the conversation here I always remembered as I had never heard my mom angry at anyone other than me and my brother before. It was scary enough. Also, I can't tell a short story to save my life, sorry. Background. So when I was around 15, our two dogs, who are both the same age, had him since he was a puppy for a company for a 17-year-old Basset Hound, who sadly passed, so we adopted a female Basset to keep him company. They had been together for a year around this point. With neither of them being neutered, they decided it would be loads of fun to make a crap load of babies. And I mean she birthed 13, but 11 lived as two were stillbirths, with us helping to raise them too, as it was a lot of puppies. As they were purebred basset hounds, they were quite expensive dogs to buy, so we sold them to people. For the price they paid us, we neutered and shipped the dogs as well as giving them pet insurance forms and an application to join the Dog Breeders Association of where we live. Both could be sent only by the owner and both cost money. But we did not let people register the puppy under our number as they were not our dogs and it was illegal, but it would be cheaper for the new owners. Story. So this mother, we shall call Deborah, didn't have the Karen look but nearly had the attitude, came with her two young kids, picked out a puppy, and tried to pay a fraction of the price we were selling them at, as we couldn't expect people to pay that price for them. Keep in mind, this was during towards the end of the boom, and we were selling them for at least half the price as we didn't want to rob people blind which a lot of breeders were doing at the time. Please don't think we were these crappy breeders that farm dogs. We love our dogs and have met some of our puppies all grown up. She then tried to buy our female dog. I'll pay full price, but I want the mom as well for that price. We adore these dogs, especially my mom who shut that down pretty fast. She paid full price eventually, and we gave her a stern warning to fill out the forms and send them off ASAP as you never know what might happen. An older dog of ours had been run over by a neighbor in our damn house and the insurance paid to make him comfortable while he was put down. Rest in peace, rascal. And 50 euros luck money back from what she paid. It's considered good luck here. My parents gave every other person 100 euros back. One week later, Deborah rings my mother and tells her that my mom needs to give her our Dog Breeders Association number to register as it's cheaper and my mom shuts her down. Hard. There were a few profanities thrown at my mother who was not impressed. She loathes swearing, so my mom hung up. Around six months later, she arrives at our door unannounced, no pup or anyone else with her, demanding that she get a refund on the pup. We were highly confused, to say the least. When she eventually stopped shouting at us, we finally figure out why she was here. Turns out, our female dog has a disease called elbow dysplasia, which means her elbow sticks out and had been missed by our vet. We thought it was normal as she looked like that since we've had her and she never had any issues walking or never showed pain during walking. So this unlucky pup has it too. We explain and prove that we were unaware and that she had seen the pup's mom and dad when she came to pick the pup and gushed about how beautiful the mom was, as well as trying to steal her. So she never copped it either. This did not please Deborah and cue her screaming again. During this rant, we find out why she was at our door. She wants us to refund her the money she paid for the pup, including the 50 euros we gave her back as the luck money, which she conveniently forgot we gave her, and pay 2,000 euros for the surgery. My mom got her to calm down and speak like an adult, and this conversation occurred. Okay, but why are you here? We gave you insurance forms and your insurance will cover the cost of the surgery. I didn't think I needed insurance, so I never bothered with it. It's quite expensive and he seemed perfect. Insurance for a year at premium rates is around 250 euros. Well, unfortunately, I can offer you two options. Either return the puppy and we will refund you, or leave and keep the puppy. 
Buddy's family now. The kids are so attached to him and we trained him so well. He's a very good boy. We'll take the dad so as the mom is broken too and we'll keep the pup as well. It's the least mom and I could do for the inconvenience of having to come all the way down here. This was the straw that broke my poor mother. She let rip at Deborah about how she was stupid for not listening to our advice. Now we told her no when she originally came asking about the mom and there was no way in hell she'd get a penny or our dogs from us. The mom dog is also called Penny. <laughs> I giggled at that. And soon sent her packing with her tail between her legs. She kept her puppy and never contacted us again. I hope that poor baby was okay. And mom says if the pup had been there with her, she would have taken him and given her the money back there and then. Okay, real quick, just gotta correct some because <laughs> it kind of irked me a little bit. Um, neutering is for male dogs, spaying is for female dogs. Okay, um, so if you neuter both dogs, I was like, if they're both if they're both being neutered, they couldn't have kids together to begin with. Because that means they're both males, and I don't know. It's just spaying is for girls. Anyways, that does sound incredibly annoying to deal with. However, um. I feel like they should have at least gotten a partial refund, but this is coming from someone who knows absolutely nothing about dog breeding or anything like that. But they uh, gave her a sort of at least slightly afflicted puppy, you know, for the price of a regular non-afflicted puppy. And I, I don't think that's fair, but the woman was obviously acting very entitled, okay? But I'm just saying, I feel like that's a little bit shady. Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. This story is called Entitled Grandparent in the Sweet Spot Anger. I'm a guy from Medellin, Colombia, and I study music, singing, in an academy in town. And every semester, it does a presentation in the city's hard rock cafe restaurant where some students create groups and prepare a song and present it. Sometimes they even compose the song themselves. My story starts six months ago, the day of the presentation. I went in the morning, for we would do a sound test, they'd close at 12 for preparing the restaurant, and open back up at 2pm for the event. During that time, it's possible to book a table. So I did, for my parents, my sister, her husband, their two kids, my nephews, and two cousins. This hard rock cafe has a wall where there are some couch-like seats instead of normal chairs with tables. I tried to leave a drawing, but I couldn't figure out how. Last year, we sat there in the show, and we will call this place The Sweet Spot. So anyway, I just booked a table for X amount of people. I didn't specify for any sweet spot or specific place. So we got a normal table with normal chairs. And I went out to get some lunch with some friends from the academy in a mall across the street. Since food at Hard Rock can be a little bit expensive for what I, and they I guess, was in the capacity of paying. I ate a 15 centimeter sub and around 1 p.m. we were heading out of the food courts and back to Hard Rock Cafe. On the way, my dad, grandfather of my nephews, therefore he will be entitled grandfather, rings me, so I pick up. It goes something like this. Hi dad, I just had lunch, how are you? Where are you? In the mall across the street, why? Because your sister and her family are there in Hard Rock, why are you there? What do you mean they're there? The event starts at 2 p.m. Why didn't you book a sweet spot? What? I can't ask them to book a specific table for me. They just see what books they have and organize the restaurant accordingly. Not an idea if that's how it works, but I was just guessing. No, they don't have the right of reserving the table they want to reserve you. You could have asked for the sweet spot. Now, where will sister and nephews lay if they fall asleep? Which is what happened the time we got the sweet spots. They're still babies. I don't know, we can carry them or something. Do me a favor and go tell them to change to the sweet spot. Me becoming angry already, I'll try. And then he hung up without even saying goodbye. I arrived at Hard Rock and asked a lady if it was still possible to change my book seats to the sweet spot. The answer was as I expected. No, the seats are already taken. Duh. I'm even glad they didn't book us that spot, because anyway, my dad, entitled grandfather, only wanted it for his grandsons to lie down and sleep on them. Like if they couldn't sleep in someone's arms. I mean, they're babies, you can carry them. Anyway, I called my father again. I didn't even greet him. Dad, they can't change this to the sweet spot, the table's already booked. 
for freaking God's sake. Okay, what else can we do? Honestly, what a mistake. It even makes me feel like I don't want to go. That made me so freaking mad. Music is my life, and I'm aspiring to become a musician. And the fact he didn't want to come see me be freaking happy for once while I did what I liked because a freaking table made me explode. I talked to him in a cold, serious way. I think the maddest I had ever talked to him. The assistance is not an obligation, Dad, so don't come if you don't want to. And I hung up and went inside with my family. Neither my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, I Google translated it, nor my sister were mad about not being in the stupid sweet spot, so there were no worries. My mom came afterwards along with my cousins, and some time afterwards, him. I didn't direct words at all to him during the event, except for some short answers when he told me something, just for being a little bit polite. What bothered me the most is that when he arrived, he said to me, my baby, don't say those things. Why wouldn't I come to your presentations? Um, because of a stupid freaking table? You know that I'll always be with you in your dreams. Canned laughter. He was acting so natural as if he wasn't mad at anything at all. My dad is a good man, but when he starts with his entitled crap for his grandsons, he seriously gets me mad. And even more so when he acts like nothing is wrong towards me. The rest of the day was normal, though. I sung on stage... Curious enough, the song I prepared was Numb by Linkin Park, which really expressed the way I was feeling in that moment, and won the applause of the public. And I assure you, there's no more comforting sensation. It really helped me get it off my chest. Yeah, it really sucks when your parents don't support you in what you want to pursue and all that, but it, honestly, an outsider's perspective, it looks like your dad was trying to make up for maybe being a jerk hole before the events, you know, when he was being sweet to you during the event. But, you know, that's just my outsider's perspective. I don't know the dude. So, yeah. This story's called, Apparently I'm Not Supposed to Take My Dog Into Pet Stores? So today, I had to take my dog to the vet for her semi-annual blood test. She absolutely loves going to the vet and was super excited to go play with all the techs. Afterwards, we walked to the pet store just down the street because she's definitely on the nice list and deserves a new toy for Christmas. Now, my dog is an Akita, so she's pretty big and I understand that she's a little scary looking. She's also super gentle and seems to understand that kids especially can be intimidated by her. So, when she sees new people, she won't run up to them, but she will get excited and start wagging her tail, which is adorable because it's a curly cinnamon roll. As a result, I don't feel the need to do anything like pull her away from scared people. I honestly think that only makes it worse. So, we walk into the store and it's pretty quiet. We are just walking towards dog toys and my dog is laser focused on the table of dog treats. A mom and her kid walk past and he points to my dog and calls it a wolf. Her face is all black and she's big enough that this isn't really a stretch. The mom then stops me and the following conversation happened. Excuse me, that breed is banned, you can't bring it in here. I'm pretty sure the store doesn't have a banned breed list, it's a pet store. That's a wolf hybrid and it's scaring my kid, you need to leave. I'm sorry your kid is afraid of dogs, but she's not a wolf hybrid and she's not bothering you. The whole time we're still standing next to the treat table, so the dog hasn't moved an inch closer to them. She's just staring at the food with her tail wagging. My son is scared, you need to leave. No. At this point, my dog decided that these must be new friends. She took a step towards them with her tail still wagging at top speed. She stretched her head towards them to ask for pets and the kid was just frozen, staring. The mother just picked up her kid and walked the other way. I just chuckled and we went to look at dog toys. When I went to check out, the cashier told me the lady had complained about my wolf hybrid and they had to tell her that all dogs who aren't acting aggressively are more than welcome in the store. The lady was ignored and my good girl got two treats from the nice worker. Not a very climactic or crazy story, but I was amused that some crazy lady thought a dog shouldn't be in a pet store. Oh yes, the trademark of an entitled parent. F make the whole freaking world bend to you and your child's stupid whims. My good god, it's a dog! It's a big I love big dogs so much. Okay, small dogs, no offense, they're really annoying and usually insanely ugly. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, now I'm not gonna hate on a dog like I see in person just because it's small. No, I treat dogs nicely, okay? Um, I love beagles, though. Beagles are so... Oh, God, I love beagles. Oh, and Boston Terriers. Oh, they're so cute. Okay, so some small dog breeds, but chihuahuas... Oh, boy, I don't like those. But big dogs. The bigger, the freaking better, okay? <laughs> ah, you... Yeah, they're just so great. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.